God called the prophet and sanctified him and sent him forward. The best thing for you to do is follow him or, or, or leave him alone. Don't, don't question the handiwork of God. Amen. All right, so we see the importance here of foot washing. So we're going to start that procedure uh, right now. Uh, what now? Let, let me go into the other part, the communion part. Uh, let's go right to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter. In the 11th chapter, jump right in verse 18. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Uh -huh. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Now, there's a false church for a reason. Mm -hmm. The false church proves the true church of God. You can't have a right without a wrong. You can't have a positive without a negative. And God must have an adversary mm -hmm. to approve yeah. the righteousness of his holy church. Amen. All right, read. When ye come together, therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Uh -huh. What, have ye not houses to eat? And now to here the in? writer is trying to express when you take part in this communion, this is not a physical type of food. It's a spiritual food, and it's for a spiritual reason. He says if, you, if, you, if, if you're hungry, eat at home. Amen. Praise the Lord. But this type of food that God is giving is a reflection of the sacrifice that he made first with the humility and the foot washing and later on in the communion where he uh, expresses that the bread is for his body, and the, the wine is for his blood. All right, read. Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Now, you do this in remembrance of the sacrifice God made at Calvary's cross. You know, he came down, wrapped himself in a human body, yes. suffered and died on the cross, so that all of us would have a right to the tree of life. Yes. Now, whenever we take part in this communion, we're thinking about the sacrifice that God made at Calvary. So we see the very importance of it. All right, now watch, read. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, and do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Notice now, he didn't say do it every first Sunday. He said whenever you do it, Amen. do it for the reasoning that is for my sacrifice at Calvary. All right, read. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. You show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Uh -huh. But let a man examine himself. Let a man take a look, a close look at himself. Are you, are you, are you able to take this communion? All right, read. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning it, it, the Lord's it, 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 body. Now, what God is saying, if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you have no right to take part in this. Amen. If you're not sincere in your heart, yes. best not to even take part in this. Amen. Amen. Because you're, you're, you're taking part in this to your own ultimate destruction. This is not something that you do every first Sunday, that they do in the false church and play around with this. This is nothing to play with. We're talking about something serious here. Praise God. We're talking about representing or, or uh, allowing us to reflect back on the nails that was put in his hands and the, and the crown of thorns that was put on top of his head and, and the, when the soldier pierced him in the side. This is to reflect on the sacrifice that God made at Calvary. And this ain't nothing to play about. Amen. You don't just take, because it's, as they do in the Baptist church and the church of God in Christ, this first Sunday, oh, it's time for communion. Oh, really now? 
Really? Amen. Praise God. No, no. This is for the holiness church. Amen. Now, turn to James, the fifth chapter. Amen. We're going to show you God's insurance plan. Amen. Jump right in verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Now, God always had a way of escape for anyone who has stumbled on life's journey. Amen. It's not about making a mistake, stumbling. It's about getting up. Amen. It's not about whether you sinned or not. Amen. It's about whether or not you have the courage Hallelujah. to stand up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Forgive me. Hallelujah. And the minute you say you're sorry and it comes from the integrity of your heart, God forgives you and takes that sin and casts it in the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more forever. I don't care if you killed 99 people, Amen. robbed 99 banks, Amen. sold 99 trucks of dope. Amen. If you tell God you're sorry, yeah. God hears you and it's from your heart. God washes you and you are forgiven. Hallelujah. Now the devil might bring it back to remembrance, but God said, I won't remember it. Amen. So we have to understand the very importance of this passage of scripture. All right, now read. Let's pick up now. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Uh huh. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. Uh huh. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Him. If he have committed sins, they shall be. Not might be, not may be, but shall be Amen. forgiven. Y'all yes. see that? Amen. All right. Confess your faults one to I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Confess, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now in the Baptist church they tell you there's no such thing as a righteous man. Amen. But here the Bible says the person who prays for you has to be a righteous man. Amen. Let, let's read it again. Confess your faults one to another. Now, confess your faults one to another does not mean that you go to your neighbor and tell him uh, that you used to be a rapist, that you used to be a, a, a murderer. You, you, you don't tell. You, you don't tell everything in, in, in testimony service. Y'all hear me? You don't tell your neighbor. Everything, but you tell, you confess your fault one to another to God, Amen. which means each and every one of us must make a confession to God. Amen. Now, if you feel that you want to confess to your spiritual leader, Amen. that's fine. Amen. But you tell your your, your, your your close prayer partner, two days later, they might tell somebody else. Amen. But but if you confess it to God, he ain't going to tell nobody Amen. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, we're going to anoint everyone here with oil who's going to take part in this sacrament. And whatever you've done five minutes ago, it's erased. Amen. It's gone. Ain't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a merciful God. Hallelujah. Praise God from glory. Last teaching he gave his apostles from Bethany. He said, teach that repentance and remission of sin be preached in his name Amen. to all nations. Hallelujah. Thank God Amen. for God's mercy. Amen. All right. In the name of Jesus.